collaborations are key to translating live lab research into clinical practice. Music is one of the ways that you can help Parkinson's patients to walk better. And one of the ways in the live lab that we are studying this is to create avatars using our motion capture capability here. We're starting to understand in the brain how this is occurring. Uh, and it has to do with the fact that when you listen to music or something with a beat, you want to move to the beat. The reason for that is when you hear something with a rhythm, not only is your auditory cortex enervated, but also motor regions of the brain are also activated. I uh, freeze, I fall down, I lose balance, and what I'm doing by, by by having, listening to music, I'm trying to control those mis mis misdirecting uh, signals to the brain uh, that uh, are causing the, the, the problem. Rhythm helps me coordinate uh, my limbs and uh, correct or, or adjust the uh, impact of, of the uh, Parkinson's. Live Lab is currently developing and evaluating new technologies for health. We can actually do great science here that benefits people who have an impairment. One of the difficulties that people with hearing aids have is that although the hearing aid works pretty good in the audiologist's office for improving speech perception, once the person is in a big room with lots of other people, the hearing aids don't work so well. All right, so let's uh, do the sentences and the talking again. We have specialized equipment here that allows us to simulate what the hearing aid user is hearing in different environments, and we can try to improve on how the hearing aid works. The dog played with stick. It's so rewarding the knowledge that you were able to do something which actually made a difference. That's why not only have I made an investment, but I've also become involved in Live Lab as an advisor to Dr. Laurel Trainer, And we have a committee that is trying to come up with new products, new processes, new programs that can be used by the hearing instrument industry and by audiologists when they are measuring and diagnosing hearing impairment.